Howdy. Howdy. I will be reading an excerpt from my story titled The Primeval Text. It's a story about dinosaurs and about a society where humans raise and care for them. In my story, every citizen must raise a dinosaur to be used for warfare. They believe that their gods dictate what sort of dinosaur they will raise. Dinosaur owners are called tamers, and they are given their dinosaurs at the age of 10. Once the tamers are old enough, they take a test to determine if their training was sufficient and whether or not they will go on to become members of the military. If they fail the test, they lose their dinosaurs. This excerpt begins when the main character, Tobias, is describing how he felt when he watched his dinosaur egg hatch in the incubator in his home. As Tobias tells the story, he is waiting to take the test that will decide his fate as a tamer. He tells what happens when, after six months of waiting, he finally sees what sort of dinosaur he will raise. It started as a tiny crack at its gray peak. I noticed it immediately. I would have noticed if a fly landed on it. I skipped school that day just to watch it hatch. My mother knew what this meant to me and didn't say anything. Surely she could remember when she was a child and she'd watched her iguanodon emerge. She still had her pet, too. She passed the test, and the iguanodon, Iggy was her name, now grazed in docile solitude in our backyard. After her success, my mother had high hopes for me. My mother's hopes had always driven me as a child, until I became a tamer and my motivation shifted to my loyalty to my pet. My mother wanted to see me become as successful as my father had been before he died. He was a tamer too, and for a while I believed that the stories of his fame in battle were the only stories my mother knew. I do want to live up to his name. I want to be someone he would have been proud to call his son. But even after ten years of preparation, I don't know if I can. My doubt began the day my pet hatched. I remember the hours I spent watching my pet's progress, inch by inch, as it split its egg down the side like a great spreading fracture. I wanted to help it, but even at age 10, I knew how detrimental my aid would be to my creature's development. And so I waited. Then I saw a beak. A duckbill? Its head emerged, curved with slanted eyes and a horn cresting backwards. The emerging miniature form still suggested a hadrosaur, a duckbill bi biped like my mother's iguanodon. But then I saw them, and my heart threatened to pound its way straight at my throat and out of my mouth. Wings. It crawled out, a small, shriveled pterodactyl, crying and lying there in its nest amongst the shards of its egg. I was speechless. The gods had given me a flying pet, but surely they must have known. Before my father died, he took my family to visit the Skylands when I was six, to see the land of the flying reptiles and their stout-hearted tamers. The flight up there alone had left me feeling queasy. Even on the back of a massive commercial pteranodon amidst a crowd of other tourists, I felt sick. But nothing compared to when I stood on the cliffs next to my father. We looked down below our perch to where a pterodactyl nested, property of one of the head tamers of the Skylands, and I lost my dinner and nearly my wits. We never visited the Skylands again. In light of my unfortunate experience a few years prior, my shock on the day of my dinosaur's hatching was understandable. Didn't the gods know everything? Didn't they know that I hated heights? Did they want me to fail the test? Though the test was then 10 years off, I was well aware of the task of required of winged dinosaur tamers. They were to ride their pets with proficiency. If I failed, oh the horrors, if I yet failed, I will be relegated to a city service job, or, far worse, service in the mines or as a dinosaur sewage cleaner. I'd be an outcast, a failure in a society where raising, owning, and training a dinosaur is everything. Without a pet, you're not a member of society. You can't even vote. It's true that pterodactyl tamers belong to one of the highest castes, second only to the Tyrannosaurus tamers, but I can't achieve that status. Not with my phobia of heights. Even at age 10, I knew this was true. And yet I fell in love with my pet. It's nearly impossible not to. There is a special, almost religious bond between tamer and dinosaur 
that a tamer could never explain to a citizen who lost his pet before it hatched or was refused the gift of the gods. Some people were, you know, rejected by the gods, destined from the start for the lowest caste. I knew this, and I saw my dinosaur as my privilege, even if I have to one day give him up. And so we bonded, and two weeks later, I was faced with the task of giving my pet a name. What to name your dinosaur? Society sets no restrictions, and the gods don't care either. It's whatever suits you and your pet. Should I choose a human name, like Bob or Henry? A mammal pet name, like Rover or Spot? A simple number designation? One of the most famous flying teams was Cedric and his Pteranodon S740. Finally, I decided on a unique name. It was a name that described my pet's appearance and the spirit of his kind. Skyfire. Once decided, I had the name branded on his wing. Skyfire is a beauty. He is a noble creature, tall now and massive, but even when I first named him, he was a wonder to admire. I have named him for how he looked when he flew in the sky, like roaring red fire. His markings are red and gold, golden on his horn and around his eyes, down his back, to his tail, and along the outlines of his wings, and red everywhere else, especially on his belly. Although I never taught him to strut and stoop like a royal creature, it was in his blood from the beginning. And so I grew proud of him, as if I had something to do, something to do with the God's decision. Thank you.